welcome to home of scares. Tonight, my little hellhounds, we have some weird psychos to fuel your anxieties. <laughs> Fourteen year old psycho posted by Mr. Jams sixty five when I was eleven. My family lived in Alaska, about fourteen miles north of Anchorage. As soon as you leave the actual city of Anchorage, you're in the wilderness pretty quickly. This event happened to me in the summer of 1977. I remember because the original Star Wars had just come out a few weeks before and I was obsessed with it at the time. In 1977, the town I lived in was actually just a series of roads and off-roads. Most of the people there commuted to Anchorage for work. That's what my parents did. They both worked nights, meaning I spent most of my time alone at home. I don't have any siblings. Our house was about half a mile in from the nearest paved road and surrounded by woods. I didn't have any real friends that lived close by. I knew a kid who lived at the end of my road. He was actually the next closest house and was still about 300 yards from mine. One afternoon that summer, I was watching TV when there was a knock at our side door. I looked outside and saw it was the kid from the end of the street with someone else. I opened the door and he told me this kid was his cousin. His family had flown up from wherever they were from to visit. I can't remember the kid's name. I do remember immediately being nervous around this guy. He had blonde hair down to his shoulders, wore a t-shirt under a thin leather vest. He also had one of those wallets on a chain. This kid's eyes were dark as hell. I was eleven and hadn't ever seen evil before, but this kid set something off in my brain. The boy from down the street even seemed nervous around him. He said he had told his cousin about my BB gun and how cool it was. I'd recently been given a BB gun as a gift. I told them to wait outside and I would get it. I just knew I didn't want that kid in my house. I got the BB gun and went outside and handed it to the weird kid. He rolled it over in his hands and looked it up and down without his expression ever changing. Without handing it back, he asked me, How much do you want for it? I can't remember my reaction. After all of these years, but I didn't really need money, and the gun was a gift, so I told him it wasn't really for sale, and I remember apologizing for some reason. Unfazed, the kid hands the gun back to me, then he reaches behind his back and pulls out the biggest damn knife I had ever seen. I remember thinking for a second that it was a sword. If you've ever seen the movie Crocodile Dundee, 
where he tells some robbers that's not a knife this is a knife and pulls out a huge knife well that's the knife this kid had the kid said how about a trade then i shot the bb gun at cans what was i going to do with this thing hunt a grizzly bear i declined the offer nervously and the kid turned away and started walking in the direction of their house i went back inside and watched some more tv about an hour later there's another knock on the door i go to our side window where i can see the door i peek out and sure enough it's the kid again this time he was alone the second time he knocked was louder he called my name i stayed quiet he left the door and started walking around our house my mother had a sunroom where she grew plants it had large windows all along the wall i saw him go to those windows press his face against the glass and cup his eyes trying to see deep into the house i stayed out of sight luckily there were no lights on and i had turned the tv off when i heard the knock when he couldn't see anything he continued around the house he took out that huge knife and began tapping the butt of the handle along the outer wall as he circled then he started saying i know you are in there i almost shit myself of course he knew i was in the house i was eleven home alone how could i have left the house hop in a car and take off hell both our cars were gone anyway i continued to keep him low and quiet and hoping he might think i went to a friend's house somewhere else how long could this psycho just circle the house he was maybe fourteen he'd get bored pretty quickly no such luck this kept up for about an hour the tapping and his voice telling me to come out and that he had another trade for my gun screw that i had gone all in on the i'm not home tactic so i stayed quiet and made my way to the kitchen where our telephone was this was 1977 no cell phones and our phone was attached to the wall in the kitchen luckily it had a super long handset cord i got it stayed low to the floor and called my mother at work she took me seriously but there was no way she could get home my dad was in the air force and they sure wouldn't let him skip out early to handle his son's crisis i would have to ride it out the sun had gone down and by that i mean it was barely peaking above the horizon in the summer the sun never went completely down in our area the kid kept pacing around for another thirty minutes or so and then was suddenly gone not being an idiot in a horror movie i just stayed down and quiet eventually my parents got home i was still awake they brushed it off as if to say see nothing to worry about i never hung out with the kid down the street again and i pretty much stayed inside the remainder of the summer 
there was something wrong with that kid. Maybe it was in my head. Or maybe he would have done something absolutely brutal to me just for that damn BB gun. <laughs> to the guy who set himself on fire for me. Let's not meet. Posted by Rock Climber 247 TLDR. My stalker set himself on fire using something flammable, but also something that wouldn't actually hurt him. This is long. I apologize in advance. For background information, I'm a female on a volunteer fire department, and this happened a few years ago when I was 20. During our drills at the former department, our bay doors are open so people have been known to walk by and talk to us, ask us questions or just to look at the trucks. One evening this dude, 23 male, strolls by a fellow firefighter from another town, which isn't uncommon. Firemen stop by other departments all the time when in town. He made his rounds and was talking to my chief, my captain, the young guys, and he made his way over to me and started chatting me up. He was a nice guy and good looking enough. We exchanged snapchats and it didn't take long to figure out what a psycho he was. After a week of talking, he messaged me saying, So how come you didn't swipe right? Confused, I asked him what he meant. And then this unfolded. He told me all this in an attempt to impress me with how devoted he was. He found me on a dating app used my picture from the dating app to find my Facebook since in one photo I'm wearing a uniform that had my last name that was definitely my bad. He then used my profile photo to find out what fire department I was on by looking closely at the fire truck in the background. He told me he walked by my department almost every day to see when we drilled and to spot me. As he is telling me this, I'm confused as heck and he goes, I'm having a pretty rough day if I can come over. Cue to him telling me he's on his way. He's used my Snapchat location to find my work and house. My location on everything is now off. When he came to my house, he brought a love letter and gifts. He said he was sorry and confused and just really wanted things to work out. I told him that he needed to leave and never speak to me again, to which he obliged by leaving, saying, if that would make me happy. He made maybe three or four new Snapchats and Facebook profiles in an attempt to add me back. At one point he got clever and made his Snapchat username Chris Smith 1990 which made me go, hey it's my friend Chris Smith. Lo and behold, it was not Chris Smith. Once I realised it wasn't my friend, but instead the psycho. He asked what I could do to make it up. I texted, get lost and go set yourself on fire. I then 
I then got a video of him walking in the woods and then he set himself on fire. He flickered a lighter over his hand and I thought, yeah, ha ha, okay. And then his entire hand and arm lit up, followed by screaming and it cut out. I started to freak out thinking, well, fuck, and immediately got a photo of the hairs on his knuckles burnt off and his burnt shirt. He was okay and coated his arm in something flammable, but something that wouldn't actually damage him blocked again. He fucked off after coming to my house again and I had a gun in my hand and told him to stop or the cops would be involved but to be fair it wasn't loaded I didn't know how to use it and was planning on swinging the thing if it got really bad so crazy stalker who set himself ablaze let's not meet Creepy Guy on the Train Posted by Rose Gone Wild Short Background I, 24 female, have been dating my boyfriend since I was 15. The first six years of our relationship have been kinda long distance. I used to go visit him on weekends and it would take me around two hours by bus and train to reach the station where he would come pick me up. This story takes place when I was 18 so I was quite used to public transportation by then and I was aware of the creeps and weirdos one would encounter when travelling. Nothing really creepy had ever happened to me apart from the usual stares and unsolicited hello beautiful one Saturday morning, I got on the usual train for the last 15 to 20 minutes of my trip after travelling for one and a half hours by bus. I also tended to seat either close to other girls or to families with children. This one time the train carriage was quite empty so I sat across of a young guy with flamingos on his t-shirt and a laptop. I don't really remember who the other people in our carriage were. That seat just looked like the safest one. Shortly after the departure, another guy entered the carriage and sat down next to me. He looked 25 to 30 years old. He was wearing some dirty old clothes and he smelled like sweat and possibly booze. He said hi and I said hi. As I wrote before, I was quite used to weirdos talking to me on buses and trains, so I didn't immediately feel like I was in danger. In my experience, it was usually better to engage on a short and meaningless conversation, then ignoring them completely. 
he asked what my name was and I made one up. Then he asked why I was travelling all alone and I said my boyfriend was waiting for me at the following station. I hoped this would be enough to make him desist but I was oh so wrong. He started telling me that he had just gotten a new phone and he had lost all of his friends numbers. He asked me to give him my number so he'd have someone to talk to at night. WTF I politely declined. At that point I was starting to feel very uncomfortable but my stop was only five to ten minutes away and I still thought he was going to give up and leave. He insisted on me giving him my phone number and started getting closer to me. At this point I stopped answering his questions and looked in the opposite direction. This must have bothered him because he suddenly put his dirty hand on my thigh to get my attention. I was terrified but I managed to utter a shaky don't touch me. I wish I had yelled it but I didn't and no one on the carriage noticed what was going on not even the flamingo guy who was literally in front of us or maybe he noticed and didn't care at first the guy didn't take his hand off me and I was petrified I don't remember if he said something else at that point because I was focused on his hand on my jeans I gained some more courage and managed to tell him to leave me alone in a slightly louder voice I guess that some people started looking in our direction in that moment because he suddenly got up and left I started crying for the relief as soon as he exited the carriage the flamingo guy asked if I was okay and if I needed him to call someone I said I was fine I tried to call my boyfriend but he didn't answer because he was driving to come pick me up. I thought it was over. The train started slowing down and I got up in order to get off. Little did I know that the creepy guy was most probably keeping an eye on me from the window of the carriage door after he left. I got off the train and started to look around hoping to see my boyfriend who would sometimes wait for me on the platform. At that point I noticed that guy had stepped off the train as well. As soon as we made eye contact he started to walking towards me. I felt my heart drop. I turned around and started walking quickly towards the stairs hoping he would lose me in the crowd. As soon as I reached the underground corridor I started running. I got to the other side of the tunnel. I ran up the stairs and towards the restrooms. I don't know why I didn't run to the main hall instead. I was panicking 
and I just went for the first place that came to mind. I locked myself into one of the cubicles, made sure it was closed, and then got up on the toilet so he wouldn't see my feet. I was wearing a pair of quite recognisable boots. 20 to 30 seconds later, I heard someone come in and hastily try all the door handles. Of course, it could have been anyone, but I'm convinced it was him. It just made no sense for anyone else to try to open all the doors like that. I remember feeling my heart beat in my throat while I was waiting for him to leave. I remained still and silent for what felt like ages until I heard him walk away. At that point, I started crying again and finally managed to call my boyfriend and tell him I was locked into one of the toilet stalls. When he got there and I came out of the stall, I was shaking uncontrollably, but he somehow managed to calm me down. When we got out of the restrooms, there was no sign of the guy, and I never saw him again. Looking back now, I know I should have reported him to the authorities, but I stupidly thought that they wouldn't believe me, or that they were going to shrug it off as not a big deal. After all, nothing really bad happened on the train, and I had no proof that it was him trying to open the stall doors. This experience made me avoid trains for a while, and even though after some time, I managed to overcome my fear. Please, creepy guy on the train, let's not ever meet again. I hope you enjoyed tonight's creepy psycho stories. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Good night. Little hellhounds. <laughs>